I covered band diagrams in an earlier video, but what you need to remember is that for a P type semiconductor, you have your conduction band and your valence band drawn like this, and your Fermi level in this case sits very close to the valence band because you would have your acceptor atoms with an energy level here and the electrons could jump into the, that acceptor level uh, in order to, to, to ionize those atoms. So um, EF, the Fermi level, would be drawn very close to the valence band in a P-type semiconductor. So this shows you for a P-type semiconductor. For an N-type semiconductor, EF, the Fermi energy, is very close to the conduction band um, and any um, extra electrons that you have from group five, they, their energy level would be here in the donor level and they could jump into the conduction band if they have enough energy. So this is how, what your band diagrams look like for a P and uh, an N-type semiconductor. You need to know that. But uh, what you also need to know is that once you have a material, so in this case we have a PN junction, if you have a PN junction and it's in equilibrium, the Fermi levels need to be the same, they'll be the same across the material. So the Fermi levels on a PN junction must connect together and that's why I've drawn the P1 higher and the N1 lower because EF is equal across the entire material. So for it to look like a PN junction on this side, it has to be drawn like this. And to look like an N-type semiconductor on that side, it has to be drawn like this. And then what you get to, in order to get this situation to work, you get a bending of the bands at the junction. So at the junction, the bands are bent. And it's this that represents the depletion region within my semiconductor. So this is the depletion, uh, so the depletion region with my PN junction. So this is my depletion region. Now we can picture what's going on in our PN junction in terms of electron movement. In my N-type semiconductor, I would have lots of electrons in the conduction band and I would have holes here in the p-type semiconductor. Now what these, what the bending of the bands represents is the fact that the electrons would require energy in, because don't forget in these band diagrams the energy goes from low to high. So what this is representing is that the electrons would need energy in order to get over this potential barrier over to the p-type. And that's because you've, uh, in your depletion region, this side has become negatively charged and this side has become positively charged. Now, for holes, their energy is represented as the opposite of electron energy. So for them, this represents a barrier because for the, for the positive holes, they would have to overcome this barrier to get over to the other side. So that's why in these depletion regions, you don't end up with any charges because they would need energy to overcome these two barriers. Now, when I apply a forward bias to this situation, so I would apply a positive terminal here and a negative terminal to this side of my diode, then that's the equivalent of making the, uh, make it so the depletion region becomes smaller and this barrier becomes smaller as well. So the depletion region here becomes narrower, but the bending of the bands becomes more shallow. And that represents the fact that it doesn't need, it doesn't require as much energy for the electrons to overcome the barrier and get to the other side. And the, the same is true for the holes. The holes wouldn't need so much energy to overcome the barrier because the barrier has become smaller. When you apply a reverse, potential difference, so this side becomes negative and this side becomes positive, then in terms of energy band diagrams, it would look like the, this, this bending, so these stay the same height 
but these would bend much more and this would represent that you need a lot more energy to overcome the barrier on this side for electrons and on this side for holes and there's a, an animation that I'll very quickly talk through because I think it makes more sense if you can see these bands actually moving. So here you've got your p-type and n-type material which you bring together. When you first bring them together the electrons that you can see here in the conduction band will diffuse over to the P region. Here in the P region, you've got holes in the valence band, and some of them will start to diffuse through to the N type region. Now, once this happens, you reach a state of equilibrium because this flow, this diffusion stops. And it stops because a few electrons have moved this way and it's become negatively charged in the p-type region near, near to this barrier, near to this interface. And the holes have diffused the other way, a few holes, and made this side of the N junction, uh, the N-type semiconductor, slightly positively charged. So then they start to repel any more holes from moving in that direction or any more electrons from moving over to the P-side. So you end up with um, a potential barrier. So that's a barrier which prevents more electrons from moving over to the P-side because they would need more energy to, to overcome this barrier. And for holes, the energy levels go the other way. So for holes, the energy increases increases as you go downwards on this uh, flat band diagram. So the holes would need more energy to overcome this potential barrier here. So you end up with a depletion region in the center, which won't allow for any charges, free charges in that region. And in equilibrium, the Fermi level that this animation refers to as the chemical potential, it flattens out. So it's the same across the material when it's in equilibrium. So the uh, EF, the Fermi level, is the same on the P-type and the N-type side. So this is what the situation looks like in equilibrium. Now, if we apply a potential across the material, so we're making the P-side here, it's, it's already got holes. We make this um, we make this negative and the holes then are more bound to this side because we have a negative potential on this side and we have a positive potential over on the other side. And what that means is in terms of the bands is that you get more bending of these bands uh, in reverse bias. And it, it means that the potential barrier for electrons to, to overcome uh, in the conduction band or for the holes to overcome in the valence band becomes larger. Of course, if we go back to equilibrium and then reverse our potential, so uh, we now make this side, pos uh, sorry, we make this side positive and this side negative, then what we find is that the potential barrier diminishes and the depletion layer becomes narrower, and now there's less of a barrier for electrons to move over here and for holes to move over here. So this is how we can picture what's going on in a PN junction in terms of the bands and how the barrier, the potential barrier, changes. This is a sketch of the IV characteristics of a diode, and this is something that you have plotted in the lab or will plot in, in the practical. Uh, and this shows your current that is on the y-axis and the voltage on the x-axis. And this equation here uh, gives you uh, the, the formula for, how, uh, for this characteristic. So you can see that you've got this exponential. Uh, you've got this exponential term. I'll just go through this. So this is the saturation current, I s. This is the exponential of e, which is the charge on an electron. The voltage divided by Boltzmann's constant and the temperature minus one. So what you should see is that. At positive voltages and forward bias, this term is entirely dominated by the exponential. So this is approximately equal to Is times just the exponential term, because it's so much bigger than the minus one. And here, what you've got here is a tiny sort of leakage current when you have it in reverse. And this leakage current is 
the saturation is equal to the negative of the saturation current IS because you can see if this is an exponential term here then when this becomes negative this goes to zero so you end up with it being equal to this. <clears throat> so here you have a leakage current this is in forward bias you can see we've got a conduction of current in our diode and what you see here is actually after a certain voltage in reverse you do get breakdown so this is known as breakdown and I'm briefly going to discuss how the device breaks down again this is my PN junction in reverse bias this time because I've got my negative terminal connected here and my positive terminal connected there this is my depletion region that in reverse bias has become a lot larger and you have the electric field of the depletion region which is negative on this side because some of those electrons moved over that side and positive on this side so what happens is you still have the formation of electron hole pairs because of just general thermionic emission of electrons from the valence band to the conduction band now we already talked about if that happens within the depletion region then any electrons that form in the depletion region through that process would just get swept by this electric field over that way because this side's positive and the um, any holes that form would get swept back to the positive side well what happens if you keep increasing the reverse bias on this so this becomes more and more negative um, this becomes more and more positive uh, relative to each other what happens is that any electrons that are formed in this in this depletion region when they're swept over sorry they're swept over that way to the positive side they feel not only the electric field from from here but also this positive charge here so the electrons end up moving so quickly through the material that they actually collide with electrons that are involved in the covalent bonding so the electrons that are in the valence band and when they collide with those electrons they impart some of their energy to those other electrons that are involved in bonding in, in they're attached to the orbitals of the atoms and they break free from their bonds and this continues it's called avalanche breakdown and the reason why it's called avalanche breakdown is because those really energetic electrons that shoot across the, the depletion region they then knock off other electrons that were were just part of the atoms and then those electrons also have more energy and they continue the process they also collide with the atoms and with the electrons that are in the orbitals in, involved in covalent bonding and they knock those free as well so all of a sudden you end up with an avalanche of electrons there's another type of diode breakdown that's known as Zener breakdown and Zener breakdown occurs so you also have your PN junction in reverse bias but what happens in sometimes when uh, the, the PN junctions are very heavily doped the electric field becomes so great that actually these uh, the, yeah, the electrons that are involved in the bonding process so they're in the valence band they or in the atomic orbitals they get dragged they get ripped out of the orbitals because the electric field is so strong and then they get pulled from here into here um, and then you get also get a breakdown in reverse uh, bias if you look at the IV characteristics of a heavily doped diode that breaks down in this particular way you can see that the uh, the voltage at the when it breaks down in reverse bias is very very constant and so we actually design uh, diodes like this that we call Zener diodes because we can use them as voltage regulators